Hey guys, welcome to Reddit Brew. Today, I will be reading from the r slash entitled people subreddit. And today we are continuing the Rachel saga. So if you missed yesterday's video, make sure you watch it before this one. I'll link part one now, as well as in the pinned comment below. But without further ado, let's see how much more audacity Rachel has. I feel like it's going to be a lot. How my entitled coworker went from the plotter to the victim and got served divorce papers at the office. So I have previously mentioned my coworker Rachel from when I was working at a small Catholic newspaper and how she had basically conned a church into footing the bill for her son's education, something she and her husband could afford to pay out of their own pocket while spending the money she had on herself. I mentioned that I did not, and do not, believe that he knew about this at the time. And here is the reason for that. I feel the need to once again reiterate the sheer entitlement of this woman. I mean, you could fill an entire mountain range with her entitlement and audacity. You see, as time went on and Rachel got more tanned, she also decided that her nice husband was just no longer worthy of her. She began complaining constantly about how he didn't make enough money, that she felt she was now too good for him, how she had previously dated a local well-known business owner, and that she was sure she could still have. Even though that business owner was married, not necessarily a lie as everyone in the area knew this business owner had a propensity for having extramarital affairs, sort of an open secret. She then started bragging that she could have any guy she wanted and would even mention that she was starting to go onto dating sites. This was back before Tinder and WhatsApp when you had to use Match.com or eHarmony, etc. Of course, she would stop the cheating talk whenever her son was around, since it was an individual building with a small staff and a decent amount of space, we were allowed to bring in our children if we needed to, especially since everyone's children tended to be well behaved and were old enough by this point to keep themselves busy and no one really took advantage of this. So her son, who was a preteen, would come by the office after school on a lot of days and wait for his dad to pick him up. During this time, however, while she would stop with the cheating talk, she would still make thinly veiled insults and derogatory comments about her husband in front of their son, who would try to ignore her, but you could see he was uncomfortable with it. When her husband would come pick up their son, she would always find something to criticize the poor man over. Either it was because he was a couple of minutes late, literally he was two to three minutes late once, and she blew up at him in front of everyone. He didn't pick up an earlier call fast enough, he was supposed to grab something from the store, he wasn't dressed nice enough, he was dressed too nice, he wasn't bright enough or smart enough, etc. I mean, this woman was doing everything in her power to emotionally wreck this man, who was a very nice man. She even stated that he was always treating her nicely and it irritated her because it made her feel like he wasn't a real man. Because he remembers birthdays, anniversaries, got her flowers or presents, etc. People, I wish I had a guy in my life that would treat me half as well as he treated Rachel. And this behavior would get worse all the time. At one point, she got mad and spent the entire day at the office ranting and raving because she tried to make him jealous over a stranger and he didn't attack the guy. That would be like common sense, maybe? By the way, her making him jealous was to gush over the way the guy looked. Instead, her husband just seemed defeated by her comments. By this point, she had eroded away most of his confidence. Now by this point, she had also started running their finances into the ground with all of her me 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 pamperings and purchases and he had finally started to notice and get some of his shiny spine back. He starts insisting that she cut back on spending 
She of course can't stand for this, so she decides she needs a real man who makes real money and will lavish her with anything she wants at any given time. Enter the affair partner. She finds the perfect patsy, if you will, though I still am not sure who was really conning slash using who in this relationship on one of her dating sites. Only problem is that he is from Canada and we are Midwest USA. So start the long distance, fully emotional affair. She would gush about him at the office, printed out photos of himself that he sent her, and talk about how wonderfully attentive he was, how attractive he was, and how rich and successful he was. Please note, this is important later. Now, I myself had been trying some online dating and even an in-person matchmaking business around this time, so I was already having enough issues with the messes I had to clean up from the creeps I kept attracting, some of which were downright frightening. So I will admit that I was already jaded with the belief that there were a lot of scammers and liars that would use these venues to prey on easy targets. Thus, I was probably more than a little biased for this next part. Feel free to call me an a-hole for it, but I did not trust this man on any level. It took her a while to even get the first picture of him, and the first pic was almost a glorified headshot, like you see in a school yearbook. It was apparently very recent, and he looked very healthy in it. Again, this is important later. He said he was just getting out of a long marriage himself and was going through a divorce, and so he understood where she was coming from in regards to her own currently still ongoing yet unhappy marriage. After a few months pass and many more pics of him looking fine and dandy, I come into the office one morning to see her standing by the copier in tears, utterly despondent. The reason? He had given her some bad news. Apparently, he had been trying to figure out how to tell her he had brain cancer and six months to live. Yeah, again, I am probably the a-hole here and definitely jaded because because I had an ex and two of my friends had exes by this point who had all three at different points in time pulled the I have cancer card to either try to guilt us into continuing to date them or in one friend's case, an excuse to break up with her. Also, I have had previous coworkers and family with cancer and when it got that serious, they did not look that healthy. I tried to tell her that, but she refused to believe me. She said he wanted to come see her soon so they could consummate their relationship before it was too late. So I just shut up about it, but refused to trust in this. I was positive that sooner or later, the other shoe would drop. Anyway, she bought him the tickets to come see her, paid for a hotel for him to stay in, etc. Now, remember that this guy was supposed to be rich and successful, but apparently all of his money was tied up in his treatments, divorce, and all this other stuff and he couldn't pay for anything. I began to see a bit of karma here. So he comes to visit, which did surprise me and made me feel a little bit guilty about thinking he may have been taking advantage of and scamming her, especially as he did actually match the photos he had sent. And she brought him to the office along with her son. Whoa, boy. Remember the coworker from the last post that was Rachel's sponsor to become Catholic? She lit off. She was the assistant editor to the paper and, for all intents and purposes, second in charge. She basically told Rachel that while she could not tell Rachel not to have an affair or what to do or what not to do in her private life, she could tell her that not only was it extremely inappropriate to bring her AP to the office, but that as a Catholic business, it would look bad on business as a whole. What if the archbishop walked in while Rachel was flaunting her affair partner around the office. Nope. As long as Rachel was still married, she was not to bring any affairs to the office. When Rachel tried to talk to our editor about it, who was himself a rather leaned back guy, he just reiterated what our coworker had told to Rachel before. No affair partners in the office. She was not happy, but he never came by again. Anyway, the trip lasted a week or so and another few months of her flying him out on her dime 
time and him needing assistance with his brand new miracle treatment that cured him of his cancer and all hell finally broke loose. Remember when I mentioned that her husband had started asking her to limit her spending? Well, turns out that he had also started paying closer attention to that spending, even more so after the affair partner had started coming for monthly twice monthly weekend visits. And he was not happy with what he discovered, namely that all the money he had been giving to her for their son's education was not going to the school. Yes, she was still having the church pay all of that, but that that now she was spending more on online dating sites and then on bringing her affair partner from Canada. I guess he must have wanted to wait a while to get all of his ducks in a row because he never actually confronted her about it. I do know that she got a bit worried at one point because he was distancing himself from her and seemed to have become very cold, but she couldn't figure out why because she honestly believed, yes, she stated this, that he was too stupid to notice her having having an affair. So one fine fall day, it happened. I was in the back, in my office, eating lunch while reading the non-Catholic paper. When a scream issued from up front, when I say everyone came running out, I do not jest. This scream had to have been heard in India. And it wasn't frightened or sad. It was indignant and angry. We rush out to see a gentleman in a suit, leaving the building, and Rachel clutching a batch of papers, red in the face, and looking like she is trying to strangle a rock for blood. She had just been served divorce papers, and she was having none of it. Somehow, she managed to convince herself that she would be the one to serve them when she was ready. And she had not been ready just yet, because she was waiting for her affair partner to propose to her. He actually did propose to her a while later, again, making me feel guilty for thinking he was a scammer. And with her own list of demands, among the divorce papers, proof of her affair. Yeah, Rachel did not see that coming. Now, you would think that this would be the end and that Rachel would be happy to let her not worthy husband go so she could be with her perfect affair partner. But no, if that were the case, then Rachel would not be nearly the entitled person that she was. She was not going down without a fight. She was going to prove that she was the real victim in all of this, even if it meant trying to commit fraud and trying to convince me to give her forgery lessons. But that, dear ones, is a story for another day. Yeah, I still think her affair partner is a scammer. There's so many red flags. Perhaps it's a green card scam, or he's actually broke and is looking for a sugar mama. Who knows? I just don't think it's genuine. Anyways, I'm so glad that Rachel's husband caught on before she completely ruined his life. And honestly, I ship OP and Rachel's ex. OP stated that she wished she had a man like him. Well, he's single now. <laughs> I really hope Rachel soon meets her demise, but we will find out if she does tomorrow in part three. I hope you're all enjoying this Rachel saga. Please leave a like and subscribe if you want. I truly appreciate when you do, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye!